So this will be Matt Gates and his uh, fiance, or are they married now? Uh, Ginger Lucky. I don't remember. But anyway, I hope you like it. If you do, please do like it. And I hope that you're subscribed. If you're not, please do subscribe. And uh, thank you so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. Hi, I'm Mark, and this is my journey through tarot. Come on. Seems like a good idea. Matt Gates and Ginger Lucky. Uh, get married, save his reputation, and everything will be great. Let's see how it works out. So what I've done, you know, I had read on Matt Gates before, and just a little mention of this uh, fiance at the time, Ginger Lucky. So now what I did is I found a little bit of information about Ginger Lucky. She's not uh, known very well, but I smooshed all that together in this little description here. It's very short, and then I'll do a reading on those two. Interesting, right? So here we go. Uh, so in 1982, Matthew Lewis Gates II was born in Hollywood, Florida, uh, descended from a German immigrant who had arrived to the U.S. after uh, 1828. Now, Gates's grandfather was a mayor of Rugby, North Dakota, so a mayor, politician, Rugby, North Dakota. Matt grew up in Florida in the house used for the film The Truman Show, uh, where his parents uh, may still live. Uh, but now in 1995, Ginger Lucky is born at Long Beach, California, the youngest of three kids. Uh, her mom homeschooled her, and dad uh, worked at a car dealership. Now, what did he do at the car dealership? Was he a mechanic? Was he a salesman? Did he run the car dealership? I don't know, but he worked at a car dealership. The 26-year-old Ginger is now known for her engagement and marriage, as of the 21st, I guess, of August, uh, to uh, Matt Gates. In 2003, Matt graduated from Florida State University with a uh, BS in interdisciplinary uh, sciences. And then uh, 20, 2006 to, 2000, to 2016, for 10 years, his father was a member of the Florida State Senate. And then uh, 2007, Matt uh, received a JD degree, Juris Doctor, from William and Mary Law School and practiced law at Fort La Walton Beach, uh, Florida. Now, back to Ginger, in 2008 through 2013, Ginger and remember, she's not very old at this time. How old is she? I didn't figure it out. But 2008 to 2013, Ginger had a job at the California Alamitos Bay Yacht Club as a sailing coach. So, you know, a little, little job, it sounds like. Uh, 2014, she was a worship leader for, a, for this Campus Crusade for Christ. It's a, it's a global organization. Uh, Crew Global, I think is what it's called. Uh, now, her brother had founded Oculus VR, Virtual Reality. Uh, remember those, you know, those goggles where you can look inside and you can see how everything's looking around? So he founded Oculus VR, becoming wealthy after uh, he sold his company to Facebook and when he was 21 years old. And he's a big donor to the Republican Party with a net worth of around $730 million uh, as of 2021, I guess. Uh, or whenever he did that. I'm, I shouldn't uh, give that a date. No, whenever he did that. Now, 2015, Ginger was a tax intern for Price Waterhouse Cooper, PwC. So an intern. And in 2016, she graduated from the University of California with a BA in economics and accounting. Uh, 2017 through 2020, she was an official big sister, you know, with the Big Brothers and Big Sisters program, the child mentoring uh, concern. And then, uh, the, so the controversy for Matt has been, Part of it has been anyway. He says he has lived with a now 19-year-old man, an immigrant from Cuba, since the man was a boy of 12. And he considers him as his son. But they're not related in any, any way, legally or otherwise. And the boy slash man is a brother of uh, an, at the time, underage girl who uh, in question uh, uh, regarding, all that's in question now regarding sex trafficking. And then uh, Gates uh, clarified this a little bit later, saying that the Cuban man is, in fact, the brother of an ex-girlfriend, okay, and she's now the subject of sex trafficking charge against him for paying the girl's flights, hotels, car, etc., and um, probably her brother's lodging and education. Now, in 2020, Ginger and Gates met at a Republican fundraiser at where? Mar-a-Lago. Where? Mar-a-Lago. And uh, they had a very MAGA-heavy uh, courtship. They became engaged at Mar-a-Lago. They had hoped to marry at Mar-a-Lago. And Fox, Janine, uh, Fox star Janine Pirro first reported the engagement. Now, Gates said he wanted the marriage to be officiated by Trump and an Elvis impersonator. That's the same thing, isn't it? Um, guess that didn't work out, though. And uh, in 2021, because... 
In 2021, because, you know, they just eloped. In 2021, Gates seriously considered not seeking re-election um, to uh, Congress for his job for a job at Newsmax, but changed his mind and began blitzing the countryside with uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene uh, fundraising or crime spreeing. I don't know what you want to call it. Uh, Gates had shown naked pictures to political colleagues of women he s says he slept with, displaying them on the House floor. Uh, and then one of Gates's girlfriends patched him in on a call with the previously 17-year-old girl, you know, the girl now, but she had previously been that 17-year-old girl in question. And uh, if Gates had tried to obstruct uh, uh, the FBI investigation by influencing her not to mention anything, uh, Gates and the girlfriend who patched him in could face federal criminal obstruction charges. Now, in 2021, back to Ginger, she's at this time an online student at Harvard Business Program for a master's and is an analyst and sales operations enablement lead. And um, she is an analyst and, uh, and sales operations and enablement lead for a biotech company making protective coatings for fresh food. Makes me think of a banana condom. Um, but uh, she's earning 80000 a year with a net worth of $300,000, which really that sounds to me like how much her home would be worth, a condo in California. Who knows? And then uh, the Lucky Family Thanksgiving. This is really the cherry on top of the cake. So the Lucky Family Thanksgiving. Lucky family Thanksgiving. So uh, they're there. Ginger's sister called Gates weird and creepy because while she was 19 and interning at the White House, he tried to set her up with an older man. Uh, she said, I saw the character and type of person he is, and when everything came out, I honestly was not surprised. Uh, she and her mom confronted Gates at that Thanksgiving dinner, and uh, he immediately got defensive and started yelling at them and calling her a narcissist and was 100%, she says, uh, gaslighting them, going full lawyer, saying, I don't have to answer your questions. And the sister said, uh, holding people accountable to whatever extent possible is important. I agree with that. And uh, there's so much more to the story, she says. It's a serious situation. Uh, the sisters are now estranged. So that's what I know about the two of them uh, together. So let's see what the cards say. And I picked a really nice deck. So the Light Sears Tarot by Chris Ann. Wonderful cards. They're very beachy. They're very now. Uh, the container they come in is really nice. It has some nice thoughts inside. And um, the cards themselves and the guidebook, all of this is good. The, um, the guidebook, although it's not in color, it's readable. And uh, it gives some good ideas as to how you might uh, interpret some of these cards. Of course, you know, the interpretation is very personal. So you have to decide if those inter interpretations entirely work for you. But they're based on the Rider Waite system. And you can see that the art goes right to the edge of the cards. They're very colorful. They're very... Uh, they just speak to you right away. I mean, you just even if you didn't know what the, uh, the symbols of the cards mean, I think anybody could look at some of these cards and think, oh, okay, this is what it means to me. Like I always say, I love to uh, have someone, if we're going to do a reading, kind of spread the cards out like this, and then they kind of get into the game. They start looking at the art, and their mind sort of kind of gets into the uh, into the mode of, of let's get some truth out here. Let's get some, some tarot reading done. So, Light Sears Tarot, really, really nice cards. So I thought this deck could be great because it's a, it's a, it's a nice, oh, one of those is backwards. I mean, completely backwards, like front to back backwards. Look, that's not good. It has to be like that. Yeah. So I picked this nice deck because, let me, let me make sure that these all seem to be correct. Yeah, they do. Um, it's a pleasant deck. It doesn't have any uh, rude uh, interpretations. And I thought, you know, let's just give this couple a break with these cards, but let's see what the cards actually say. So Matt Gates and Ginger, uh, sad for her name, Lucky. So now she's Ginger Lucky Gates or Gates Lucky, or maybe she's just Ginger Gates, GG. I don't know. But let's see what's going on for their life. Does she really, I mean, she must really not believe that uh, look at me, I'm just uh, this has got me so upset. She must really not believe that he's guilty of these things. I mean, she is a young, inexperienced, I guess, uh, young woman. So let's see what the cards will tell us. Look, they don't want to do this, they don't want to get involved in this. What the cards will tell us for Matt Gates and Ginger Lucky. And my question is mostly for her does she honestly believe that he's not? Um, guilty of these things that, uh, that he's been accused of. Can you imagine the conversations around that? And how do you still marry somebody uh, when that's the case? I don't get it. So, and her sister completely won't talk to her. So the question is going to be is, um, look, look, the cards don't want to do this. 
<laughs> come on, cards. Give me a break. Come on. Let's 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 work together. Let's try to um, find out cards. What 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 is the situation with Ginger Lucky and Matt Gates? Does she believe him? I guess she certainly does. And then I uh, just guess we'll see. Does, will the marriage last? Unless I think of something else to ask. So we'll do a nice, careful spread. We'll take six cards for the first part of this full um, Celtic cross. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, six cards. Let's go from the top. And uh, we'll fan these out, make them nice. Let's ask the question. So Ginger Lucky. Um, I, let's see. Does she really believe that he's innocent? And was he was he honest in telling her about what happened? That's very interesting. The signifier card for that then is the Eight of Pentacles, and the Eight of Pentacles is typically honing your craft, just getting things right, getting uh, everything down. So how does this apply to the two of them? Does this mean that she's more concerned with her business presence? than uh, what's going on here i don't know but it, it, it is indicative of a woman uh, in business and that's kind of who she is okay so let's see uh, maybe this just tells us uh, more so who she feels like she is and as a young woman in business you know it can be very heady and make you feel like you're making all the right judgments perhaps the challenge to this of a woman uh, really perfecting her craft is the eight of swords and that's lots of things coming at you at the same time and look at this woman i mean she's really tied up with all these issues it's like she's having a nightmare about this she's actually this woman is actually looking in a mirror and that's what she's seeing interesting interesting so this woman uh, uh young woman in business uh with ideas she's holding up a candle is challenged by lots of things coming at her really rapidly with this eight of swords lots of issues the basis of this then is the nine of pentacles and the nine of pentacles is really having everything you want and more so this is where she was the basis of this just tells us how she uh came to to where she is now she uh is on top of the world she's got the job she always wanted uh making a decent salary i mean one of a first major job at eighty thousand a year isn't bad and then um so that's where she's at her brother's uh, a millionaire um okay in the past of this reading then is the queen of swords so this queen is holding on to this sword almost like a rudder on a boat I mean she's just resting on a pillow but if you uh, skew, look at this uh, a little skewed here it almost looks like a boat with some flags and she's using this uh, sword as a rudder and uh, this uh, swords for me are truth and justice and when you have a queen uh, she's really been in charge of her truth and her justice that's the past that's the past, and I think this is more to how she feels she's been steering her life. Everything she's done up to this point has led her in a positive, productive um, uh, way, and why wouldn't she feel that this decision to marry uh, Matt Gates, a congressman whose family is wealthy, uh, why wouldn't that be a good, a good idea? In the um, sky of this reading, because her family I don't think is wealthy. I think they're only wealthy from the brother uh, having sold his company and becoming wealthy. Now, the sky of this is the Five of Wands. Okay, the Five of Wands, we're getting somewhere now, is this is... Uh, uh, lots of plans, lots of actions, lots of lots of uh, ideas that are all in conflict. Okay, so it's not a productive; it's it's an unproductive confusion of uh, argument almost. So that's the sky of that reading, and then the likely outcome for the first part of this, and maybe that's how this answer will come to us in two pieces, is kind of where she's at, and what's the likely outcome of that, and that is, oh my goodness, death and rebirth. That's thirteen. It's usually just called death. And, uh, you know, I don't think I've ever, ever drawn this card while I'm using this deck, ever. And I've used this deck quite a few times. That's very interesting, because I don't remember even ever having seen this. So death and rebirth. So this could be uh, one of two things. It could be the end of her life as a young woman and the rebirth as a married woman, and maybe the promise that comes there. Or it could portend, because I say, what will be the final outcome of this? It could portend the end of this uh, marriage, perhaps, and another start. So we'll see what the last part of this uh, reading tells us, because we're going to get down to the self of of Ginger Lucky and this question of to whether um, um, he told her the truth, not whether she thinks he told her the truth. Did he tell her the truth? The self of that question, then the signifier card, the self of that question 
is the Ace of Swords. So this is a great big offer. Swords are, for me, swords are always truth and justice. And this Ace of Swords uh, depicted by this woman, and look at here, it's got a, a, a mathematical equation right here. It's got this uh, spiraling staircase that reminds you of the infinity of a, of a conch shell uh, with just inspiration shooting out from the center. And this woman really contemplating that. Look, even stairs leading uh, into this picture right here. So the Ace of Swords, this starts out as a signifier. The self of this question is her really believing. She Remember, she was this Queen of Swords, and now we've got this Ace of Swords right here. Interesting. So what is the challenge to that Ace of Swords, if that's her right now, looking for true, truth and justice? The challenge of that is uh, Two of Cups. And the Two of Cups is, uh, you know, passionate, emotion. Look, it's the blending of two hands. They just got married. Uh, really uh, getting into a partnership. The challenge, ah, the challenge to her seeking this truth is this partnership that they... They, they did. They became married. The uh, hopes and the fears for all of that is temperance. So, you know, really finding a way to balance um, the issues that are, that are appearing here. And the likely outcome of the whole thing, then, is going to be right here. And that's the Nine of Cups. And the Nine of Cups is, is having everything you ever wanted and more. So that's an interesting way for this to come out. I wonder if this is telling us somehow that uh, they're going to... Uh, um, squeeze out of this situation so i was going to leave it at this but i'm but i've decided i, I can't i'm going to draw four more cards four more cards to to see uh, just if this relationship is going to come out uh perfectly or, or well anyway lasting for the two of them i'm going to put this uh, folder right here because i want to use these cards in a minute and do this drawing right on top there so will this marriage last couldn't be simple. Four cards. If at any time during the draw the question seems to be answered, I'll stop right there. But will this marriage last? First card. Six of Wands celebrations. Yep, it will. That's the end of it. It will last. So that was very interesting. So let's go back over it really quickly. <clears throat> For the signifier of the, of the first part of that, we get... Um, Ginger as a young woman uh, honing her craft, you know, her, her business acumen. And then it's challenged by what? It's challenged by the Eight of Swords, and just she's looking in a, in a mirror and just seeing a nightmare. But then the basis of the whole thing, it started out as a woman who has everything that she wants and more. And remember, her brother just became a millionaire, and she's her career has been going super uh, fantastic. And for the past of it, it just shows a young woman who it looks like she's kind of steering her boat, but really she's sitting on a cushion with a, a sword and flags in the background. So I wonder if she thought she was steering her boat, but maybe that's not what was happening at all. She was just sitting uh, still. And then in the sky, the whole thing was all this confusion and, 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 and disharmony. And for the final outcome of that was then the death card. And so is it the death of her old life and now she's got a married knife or is it the eventual death of this relationship and, or something else? And then the self of the last part of it was um, her as this ace of uh, swords and, uh, you know, really uh, feeling as if she's in control of her destiny, uh, challenged uh, in the environment of this Two of Cups, this loving union. So that's the marriage, you know. She thinks she's in control. They've got this wonderful marriage, and now she thinks she's done everything perfectly. And then the hopes and the fears is that they find temperance, they find a balance to make it all work, with the final outcome being this Nine of Cups, which is really the greedy merchant. Ah, the greedy merchant. You know, the greedy merchant is, is displaying all of his trophies to the world, and uh, but maybe that's what she's trying to do, display all her trophies to the world, and being a bit greedy about that. That's interesting, because I said, it's just not enough. I, I drew uh, up to four more cards, and the first card uh, told the story. It said, um, you know, celebrations. So it looks like the marriage is going to last. I'm Mark, my journey through tarot. Tomorrow's another day. Stop by, we'll do it again. Ciao for now. Bye. <laughs>